So today I want to do a personal testimony, um, an encouragement for single parents. Um, you know, God has shared this on my heart. Uh, you know, sometimes um, when there's just one parent um, in a household and the other one is not existent or not there um, or passed away or gone for whatever the reasons or case may be, uh, man, I want to give you words of encouragement. So... When I was growing up, you know, my dad lived in uh, Chicago, Illinois, so he lived about six hours and a half away from me, um, and it was hard to see him. You know, he didn't have a vehicle, uh, and I wanted more time with my dad than what I thought I, would, I should have, you know. Um, my mom did a great job, uh, single parenting. Um but the greatest gift that she gave me was introducing me to Christ at an early age. So it was hard to see my dad. You know, I got to see him like every summer. Um, but, you know, I always wanted more, you know what I'm saying? And so my brother, who I got by five years, you know, his dad was in uh, his dad was in town. And so and so he got to see his dad more often than I did a lot more often. And there was times that, uh, you know. I did go, which was rare, you know, but it hurt, you know, out of all that pain and everything like that. I know some people will say, you know what, well, there's nothing I can do. You can pray for your child. You know, you can introduce your child to Jesus Christ. Because what happened when my mom introduced me, it allowed me to not worry about the hand I was dealt, but how, how to play that hand, you know, <clears throat> and even through that pain, you know. I said, I'll never make my children feel how I feel, you know, because there was times, like I said, I didn't get to go, you know, my brother's dad gave me money and everything like that. But, you know, Genesis 15 and 20, what the enemy for evil, God will turn for good. You know, some people think it's the enemy, you know, saying, like I said, not being able to uh, have my dad like I wanted to. Uh, my mom moved to, uh, you know, a different city because it was a better place for me to live. So I'm thankful for those sacrifices. But, you know, I said I'll never make my children feel like that. And I remember, um, you know, out of my kids, you know, when I had them and I was pushing them, <clears throat> and one of them was two and one of them was one, you know, I heard this guy, he came to me, he said, yo, Lok, man, he said, you a good dad, man. And he was like, how do you do that? And I'm first I'm thinking, like, you don't know? But then it hit me, like, he really didn't know. He's like, no, nah. he's like, bro, I don't know. And I was just like, man. And so I said, I, I said, bro, you know, you spend time with him. You, uh, you know, teach him right from wrong. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, it's good to buy him things. I said, but time is, is better than just buying some things or just paying child support and stuff like that. Because, you know, my dad, he holidays, birthdays. Oh, man, he sent, sent all types of gifts and stuff like that, which I was always grateful for. But I cared about the time. But like I was telling that dude, he said, you know what? Thank you. And, you know, I started to see that how many people started to look up at me, you know, what I'm saying like somebody I know that's almost my dad age. You know, he said, man, you help me be a better dad. And I'm just like, man, that's powerful, you know, what I'm saying because you never know who's looking at you. And I only did that because, I, you know, out of pain versus purpose, you know, what I'm saying. And so with that being said, you know, I remember how it felt when I couldn't go with my brother's dad. And I said, you know, it's OK. So. So what happened was, you know, I ended up having more children. And once, you know, me and my children's mother stopped, they had a little brother, you know what I'm saying? So I don't discriminate him. But let me put this disclaimer out there. This is not to throw shade on anybody or anything like that. I'm just going to tell the story. So, again, I'm not trying to talk about anybody. But, you know, when I, you know, he wanted to come down for the summer. You know, and he come down several times. I don't discriminate because I remember how that pain felt. So I'm not gonna treat him, treat him like that. You know, I remember uh, when his dad and my children's mom I got together. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about that situation, um, but there was some friction when I tried to talk to my kids and things like that. So again, like I said, I'm not gonna go into detail. Um, but at some point, you know, I could have been like, I could have got upset and said, you know what? I'm not even going, 
I'm not even going to do this little boy like this. Or I'm not even going to spend no time because he ain't my child, you know, which I could have did that. And that's why I say what the amen for evil, God will turn for good. You know, so when there was that friction and stuff like that, I said, you know what? What would be the godly thing to do? And I began to pray and stuff like that. And so, you know, when he came down here this summer, you know, his, his father had called and he said, man, he said, I really appreciate you. He said, man, you, you know, you allow, uh, he said, uh, you know, you, he said, you allow me to talk to my, my you know, my son without no problems. And I said, nah, bro. I said, I ain't going to do you like that, man. And that's what he said. You know, he said, you, uh, you know, you a real man of God. He said, man, you know. He said, every time I call you, it's no problem. I said, no, nah, that's how it is, because that's how we supposed to be, man. Like, you know, you know, we family, you know. So like I said, our children are related and it's best that we have a cordial relationship, you know, saying for our children. He said, I really, you know, I really appreciate that. I really respect that because because that's cause that's what's best. So I want to say that there was times in my life that couldn't nobody help me but just pray. But, you know. God began to share some things with me. So I just wanted to give you some words of encouragement and just understand that, you know what I'm saying? And now that I pray for their relationship, you know what I'm saying? So their relationship can be like me and my kids, my relationship that took some years, you know what I'm saying? To really get to a cordial place where we can sit there and pray. But just, just know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And that also means for your children as well, too. You know, Second Corinthians 1 and 4, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Verse 5, for the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will sh shower us with his comfort through Christ. Matthew 25 and 40, it says, and the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of these least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are doing it to me. Matthew 18 and 5. Whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. Proverbs 26 and Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart. You got to understand it, but now you always acknowledge him and direct your, he will direct your path. So just know that, you know, God's going to use all of this for his glory. I know it may seem like there's no hope or, you know what, God, like my child is missing their father. My child is missing their mother or whatever the case may be. But know it's all going to turn out for his glory. It's, 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 it's all going to work out for your child. And I'm telling you, because of what God has done and God has shared with me some things, it allowed me to be who I am today. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, if you take anything from that, you know what I'm saying? People say I turned out all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I remember when I was, uh, and I, me and my kid's mom was separated. Went, uh, we got, we were done. And I went back to college to get my degree. I was working. I was going to school. I was playing football. And, you know, she had got pregnant. And so or somebody else. And so she had gave me, you know, the, she had sent my two oldest boys. And, man, I looked up to God. I said, man, God, this is, this is tough. This is hard. And God said, this is what a single mom feels like. And I'm like, wow. Now, don't get me wrong, like, I grew up in a single-parent home, and listen, I knew it was a struggle, but I never felt it, because my mom sacrificed, she did what she had to do for me, so that's why I take care of my mom today, because I'm very appreciative, but I found out how to struggle is, so now I can teach others, you know, say, so you need to have a cordial relationship with your kid's mom, you need to pray for her, she might not let you see the kids right now, but pray for her, pray for her, you know, so, but understanding that, you know, this is all going to work out for your good. You know what I'm saying? Roman, God has given you a promise that if you love him, no matter what it is, it's all going to work out to your good. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose for those that love him. So with that being said, take these words of encouragement and just know that you might not be able to see it. That's why it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight, not what it looks like. But I'm telling you, because there are so many people that look up to me as a role model and as a big brother and, you know, a, a spiritual mentor and things like that. And even people that I'm actually younger than I'm, I'm their spiritual mentor, you know what I'm saying? But it's just a it's just a blessing to God again. But I'm just saying just just know that God is going to use that, man, because out of that pain burst purpose, out of that pain that all my mom had when she was having me for those nine months. And I came out. And God has used me to be a blessing in a lot of people's lives. I'm telling you, God has something special for your child and something special for you. But just know that how much he loves you. And if you introduce your child, teach him how to pray and stuff like that, God will show him how to play his hand because it's not the hand you were dealt. It's how you play the hand. And watch this. 
I never became bitter about my dad. You know, my dad had other children. And he was there for them. And he spent more time than he did with me. But I never became bitter. And I love my brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? I'm not upset about that. But I'm grateful that he did what he did, spending more time because he probably wished he could have spent more time with me. And I have a great relationship with my dad, like I said, you know. But out of that is God's glory. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still respect him. That's why I say, honor thy mother and thy father so their days may be long and holy. So just know that no matter what it is, it's all going to work out for your good and for your children's good. Again, no one for to get you shall prosper. And let me say this before I go. You need to take your child or pray for your child and you say, Lord, I rebuke it. Anything that was spoken over my child, I rebuke anything negative that was spoken over my child. I curse it because what happens is, you know, God was teaching me that we don't we don't cancel out the curses that were spoken over our children. When I was younger, I had a, a pastor tell me I'm never going to be nothing in life. You know, and I don't want to say that person's name, you know, saying, but I canceled that, you know, said what they said. And I remember I had a teacher in class tell me. Because they were mad, we were uh, in a class, and you know, I end up, uh, you know, they, uh, they end up beating them in, in, in this this area, and they said, "Oh, you just, you just need to go down the hill. You ain't gonna beat up in life." You know what I'm saying? But they were mad. They were talking out of their flesh. So, you know, when people say stuff like, "Oh, you'll never be nothing in life," and sometimes we can just wear that the rest of our life, like in our head, like maybe I'm never going to be nothing in life. That's why you got to cancel that stuff at the root and say, whatever was spoken, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I cancel any words that were spoken over me. I cancel anything that was spoken over my children, anything that was spoken over me or anything like that. Cancel that because, you know, God taught me how to cancel that stuff because what happens is I had to tell somebody and they an elder of the church. I had to tell them one day, you know, they were talking about this, this, this kid that, you know, that, uh, you know, was very troubled in some, some areas and things like that. And they were like, they'll, you know, they'll never get over this. And I said, how can they get over if you talking like that? And I said, you can't say it like that. You got to say it better. And they end up saying it in a better way. And I'm like, cause listen, how, how you expect that child to do better? How you expect to pray? If you, you know, how you expect somebody, somebody praying and you over there speaking negativity, regardless of the fact that child ain't lost. God is going to use all of that. But you can't speak negative and then expect God to do something. Come on now. We got to be better than that. We got to be spiritually mature. So that's what I'm saying. Just cancel that stuff and everything like that. And just spend time with your child. Teach him how to pray. Allow them to pray, you know, and watch what God do. God, God is going to use that pain. God never wastes pain. I'm telling you, pain bursts purpose. Pain bursts purpose. Pain bursts purpose. There's purpose. So I'm telling you, and so many people are so proud of what I do. I believe you with this. I asked God one day, I'm like, God, look at this world. Look at all this stuff happening. Look at all this negative stuff. Look at all this. Look at all that. Look at all this. Look at all that. And I said, God, what you going to do about it? You know what he said? He said, what you going to do about it? So that's why I do what I do. That's why I, I, I do these words of encouragement and stuff like that and minister to people and help people and stuff like that. I'm not going to be sitting here and keep complaining about stuff in this world and, and, and not make a difference. That's not going to be me. That's not. I'm going to do everything that he called me to do. So, I'm gonna, so with that being said, I just want to tell you I love y'all. Stay encouraged and know that God loves y'all and it's all going to work out for your good. Even if you don't see it right now, just trust God. And then there's a point where you stop praying for that specific thing and you start praising God. Start thanking him because all we're doing is just waiting for the manifestation. That's it. That's it. It's already done. Anytime God, think about it. Anytime God has to use a person, God has to train that person prior to you even meeting them. Think about it. If these words are touching you, God had, I had to go through all of that. I had to be born at a certain time. I had to be trained. I had to be, I had to learn. You know what I'm saying? And God had to show me how pain bursts purpose. God had to show me all that so you can get these words of encouragement. People be like, I saw people all the time that say, man, you know what to say every, 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 you know, at the right time, you know what to say. That's because God trains me. I don't play with souls. And yeah, I suffer persecution. It already said that was going to come. That's why I read my word. I'm not worried about that. 
I'm not obviously Galatians 1 to 10 says, obviously, I'm not here to, to please people. I'm here to please God. Because if I wasn't, if I was here to please people, I wouldn't be a servant of Christ. I can care less about friendships. I care more about souls. And some people you got love from a distance. Because I know you don't know anybody. That's why God, that's why Jesus said, Father, forget them for you know not what they do. But today, oh, this day, oh yeah. It's time to dispel all of that because what happens is we we take off the helmet of salvation. You know, we take off the helmet and then all that stuff is bothering us. But understand that it's all going to work out to your good. That's why God currently got me writing a book to share with people and tell them, listen, man, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. But listen, man, if you want what's best for your child. And that's why I started to be nice through the, through the difficulties and stuff like that. Dealing with my kids, mom. I'm not going to get into detail, but with the difficulties, you know. And God even showed me in areas where I could have been better. God said, you can pray for her. You can be nice to her. Even times when I didn't want to. Because, you know, it's hard to be nice to somebody when they're not being nice to you. But watch this. But I began to do that. And I really didn't want to. And God put it in perspective that I could understand it. I was like, well, I never wanted to hurt my kids. That's, you know what I'm saying? And God said, if you talk about their mom or if you, you know, talk negative about her or argue with, with her in front of them, how do you think it's going to make your children feel? And it, it hit me in the way that I said, you know what, God, okay. Because, like, even though we decided, you know, the chapter is that chapter of our life is over, she's like my sister in Christ now because I got to pray for her and stuff like that. You know, and God already said that anyway. So, you know, a lot of times people want to fight people, man. Say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities. A lot of the fight is going to be done on your knees. I'm going to just leave it at that. It's going to be done on your knees, not against people. And make sure you always got your armor on. So just want to say that. And just know that, you know, God has something great in store for that, for that pain. God never wastes pain because there's purpose. Love y'all. God bless.